You may have heard that Astra is planning to use a hybrid engine in order to power its rocket to the carbon line. You may also be familiar with some other rocket types. For instance, SpaceX is using liquid engine in order to power its vehicle, the Falcon 9. And the space shuttle used solid rocket motors in order to help boost its orbiter into space. So what are the differences between these rocket types and rocket engines? Let's take a little bit of a step into the world of engine design and discuss what is differentiating these different types of rockets. But don't worry, we'll break down the rocket science into easy manageable chunks. First, let's start with the basics of how a rocket engine works. Essentially, what a rocket engine needs is to produce a flame in order to create temperature and pressure. If we remember back to our fire safety classes, we know that there are three elements that keep a fire going. A fuel, an oxidizer, and heat. In order for us to make a rocket work, we need to make sure that all three of those elements are present. Usually this means that we're going to put fuel and oxidizer into the combustion chamber and add heat in order to create the combustion reaction. Each of the rocket systems that we will discuss today are considered chemical bipropellant systems. This is because they're using a chemical reaction in order to produce thrust. What differentiates these different types of rockets is not actually the combustion reaction or the nozzle, but instead is the state in which the fuel and the oxidizer exist in. This will ultimately affect how the fuel and the oxidizer are managed and the overall complexity of the system. We start first with the simplest form of chemical propulsion in terms of complexity, which is a solid rocket motor. As the name suggests, this implies that the fuel and the oxidizer exist in a solid state within the combustion chamber. In order to achieve this, the fuel and the oxidizer are powderized and mixed into a binder which forms a sort of plasticky uh, structure which can be inserted into the combustion chamber. Usually this is called the propellant grain. Once this propellant grain is put into the combustion chamber, it can then be ignited by adding heat. Now we have all three components of the combustion triangle. We have fuel and oxidizer in their solid form, and we have now the heat. Once the combustion reaction gets going, it will burn along the inside surface of the propellant grain. This will vaporize the solid components of the fuel grain and allow them to combust. This reaction will continue until there is no longer any propellant grain left to combust in the combustion chamber. One important thing to note about solid rockets is that it's actually not possible to stop this reaction once it starts, because all three elements of the fire triangle are there. The only way the combustion reaction can be stopped is once the propellant grain is fully depleted. This presents an inherent safety risk because if you have an accidental ignition or if some problem occurs after ignition has already taken place, there's not really much you can do to try to mitigate the situation. Astra initially looked at a solid rocket design in order to power our vehicle all the way to space. But ultimately we decided not to go for this option because of the safety issues that we would be presented with. Next up, we have liquid rockets. As is also inherent in the name, this implies that the fuel and the oxidizer exist both in a liquid state as they are pushed into the combustion chamber. Of course, this also means that we have to have some way in order to manage the fuel and the oxidizer in their liquid state. This usually involves the use of a tank and some sort of system which will feed the liquid from the tank into the combustion chamber. One thing that should be noted about this system is that the combustion chamber pressures can get quite high, and so in order to push the liquid into that combustion chamber, we need to have a higher pressure that feeds into the combustion chamber. This usually means we either need to have a really high pressure tank that's pushing the fuel and the oxidizer out into the combustion chamber, or we can have a high powered pump that raises the pressure of the liquid the fuel and the oxidizer, such that it will flow into the combustion chamber. Usually these propellant management systems tend to be quite complex and quite expensive. 
this is usually why they're not favored by student rocket groups such as ourselves. Liquid rockets do form the backbone of the commercial launch market, where there are key parameters of high performance and high efficiency lead to them being more commercially viable. Another key advantage to a liquid engine is that the combustion reaction can be stopped at any point. All you have to do is simply stop pumping liquid fuel and liquid oxidizer into the combustion chamber. This makes them a key component in engines that need to be restarted, or even in engines that are planned to be reused. Finally, we'll look at the hybrid rocket engine. Now, the word hybrid is often used in context with a hybrid car. This seems to imply that a hybrid rocket would have some sort of electrical power component. However, this is actually misleading. In fact, hybrid is simply referring to the fact that a hybrid rocket is utilizing both a solid fuel and a liquid oxidizer. In this way, it's kind of combining the two different parameters of a solid and a liquid rocket. Similar to a solid rocket, the solid fuel is compacted into a fuel grain that's placed inside of the combustion chamber. And then similar to a liquid rocket engine, the oxidizer is in a liquid form and exists in a tank where it is then fed into the combustion chamber. Once the liquid oxidizer is fed into the combustion chamber, it is able to react with the solid fuel grain in order to create the combustion reaction. Similar to liquid rockets, hybrid rockets are able to be stopped and started. Because of the fact that the oxidizer is in a liquid state, you can simply stop the flow of oxidizer into the combustion chamber. Remember that we only need to remove one element of the combustion triangle in order to stop the reaction. This means that they have a lot of the safety benefits that come with the liquid engine, while also maintaining some of the simplicity that comes with the hybrid engine. Ultimately, this pair of factors is what allows Astra to easily pick the hybrid rocket as the best rocket option for getting to the carbon line. Another interesting factor about hybrid rockets is that they're a relatively new field of rocket science. This is another reason why Astra thought it motivating to consider utilizing a hybrid rocket design. As a student group, we're excited to participate in the activity of expanding the knowledge of rocket science and potentially developing new technology that can be used within the space industry. For continuous updates on our design and progress towards developing our hybrid rocket, please subscribe to our channel. In addition, this will be the first video in a series in which we attempt to break down some of the more complicated elements of rocket science in a palatable manner for a general audience. This should help you to engage in and understand what Astra and other groups are up to. To continue the learning, do be sure to follow our channel, and remember to expand your horizons.